Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kodrim Bukur. Uh, I'm a consulting architect for Red Hat uh, Switzerland. And I will attempt to do the slides of my customer uh, six, six group. Unfortunately, David, who, who is the head of IT, is, is just landed, so it's tight for him to get here. But he will be here throughout the uh, actual event uh, the whole week, so you will have the chance after this slide deck to ask him uh, directly about the six uh, experience without having a Red Hat proxy in between. Uh, this stage is normally for customers, so uh, I shouldn't be here without one, but this is the situation at the moment. So I will go uh, through the slides that the six uh, prepared, and I discussed with them this morning, early in the morning, what should I present from in their behalf, as well as some of the technical aspects which I know very well. So um, uh, briefly, um, what I'm going to cover, so the six uh, group uh, as a company, and then their journey towards the DevOps, uh, and how they accomplish it in the Swiss uh, financial and IT ecosystem. Um, then we're going to look a bit at the history of how they adopted OpenShift to, to enable technically at least the DevOps initiatives. Uh, and then uh, the current state, and a bit of, if there's time about the architecture, use cases, and how SIX is using OpenShift today. So a bit about SIX is, uh, SIX is a quite um, important company in the financial sector in, in Switzerland, although it's, it's quite small, it's not so known. Maybe when you think about Switzerland and finance, you think about UBS, Credit Suisse, some of these large banks. But Swiss, uh, SIX has been evolving the Swiss uh, financial market uh, since at least 1930, when one of the divisions of, of, of SIX was created. Um, but since they are involved also with the managing the entire Swiss stock exchange, uh, uh, which was actually founded around 1850, they really have a lot of history in the, in the Swiss market. Um, they have quite a lot of uh, financial instruments, up to 20 million. They have just 4,000 employees, so it's not a large company uh, as UBS and Credit Suisse, for example. Uh, and part of it, uh, quite a large number are engineers, or so about 700 of them are in engineering, and they are quite uh, involved in, in maintaining a lot of applications in the financial sector across six divisions. So uh, among these divisions, uh, some of the most important ones, as I mentioned, is the Swiss Stock Exchange, uh, which they think is the fastest uh, in the world. It could be because it's Swiss. Uh, but definitely has a lot of technology there, and it's, it's quite a, a strong uh, IT team behind it. Um, the other important division is the six payment services. This is where uh, six is quite involved. They, they, they provide uh, the level of Switzerland probably 99% of the credit card uh, machines for transactions, ATM. So if, when you go shopping in Switzerland, which is a very cheap country, you probably use some of their uh, hardware and behind it the, the back-end software. Um, they also provide the security services and they, they transact uh, a lot of the, the financial instruments uh, inside the, the Swiss market. And for all of these uh, type of uh, divisions, they have a lot of software behind. So the, because of this, around 2015, um, the, the, and this is the, the slide deck the customer prepared exactly for the DevOps part, and I'll do my best uh, to impersonate the customer. Uh, they started on a, on a journey for DevOps. Um, and uh, was one of the most important things they, they, they wanted to, to look at is how they can collaborate. They had six divisions, each one of its own IT. They had a lot of uh, um, duplication. A lot of things are let's say, more conservative, especially in a Swiss financial company. So they really needed to go much faster. And they created a vision around uh, DevOps. Uh, they embarked in this uh, way b before they started to look at OpenShift, actually. And they also created some nice t-shirts uh, that you will see a bit later. How do they look like? But the main drivers uh, for SIX uh, to, to, to do this uh, and to try to change their culture around DevOps uh, were, of course, the quite known one, but, but quite important for them as well. So they wanted to increase their efficiency. They wanted to um, actually go faster to market. The, they, they have a lot of pressure from other companies within Switzerland and from outside, because they're also involved in the international sphere as well. Um, they have a large number of deployments, a large number of applications, um, quite a few technologies to develop them, many, many environments. So with all of this in mind, they needed something not only on the software side, but also on the, the way they work. 
So the, the, the main uh, thing that they started to look at is what, what is blocking them, what are the impediments that they have uh, to, to achieve their, their goals, to, to, to have all the um, DevOps in place. Um, and uh, these are the things that they faced during the, the DevOps uh, initiatives, uh, but also before they thought about what was going to block it. Of course, some of the things are the cultural. This is, this is not easy to change. But also the way uh, the, the leaders could fall back to their old behaviors. In, in the Swiss corporate world, uh, you might not know, but uh, it, it, it's quite a structure. A lot of the people are actually also involved in the Swiss army. So it's, it's, it's not a, a very flexible uh, organization sometimes. So it's not easy to, to have an easygoing discussion with anyone across the, any levels. Um, the, of course, the, the, the roles are quite defined, and the, to, to think in roles and, and, um, is, is quite common, and to, to not think in them and try to have a cross-cutting, cross-domain uh, expertise and, and be multiple things, wear multiple hats is not so common. So these were the main challenges. On the other hand, uh, they, there are many success factors and things that actually helped in this company, and they identified them, and they really implemented them and put them in practice. I, I had a chance to be embedded at the customer for uh, more than a year and a half, uh, and I had the chance to see that this works, actually. Um, so a, a more important thing that they, they looked at is, is how do they build the teams, how do they build a DevOps team, and how they uh, allow these teams to, to decide locally and not uh, from the top down, but from bottom up how to handle conflicts, and uh, above all, they wanted to have fun. Um, six being six, of course, they came with six dimensions of DevOps, uh, five plus one. And of course, the central one, and this is how they, they look at DevOps, uh, is the, the mindset and the attitude. So this is, as I mentioned earlier, this is what has to change, especially an organization like, like six. Uh, but of course, they also looked at the way the organization, the processes, the architecture, the infrastructure and the skills are laid out and how they are utilized inside the organization. And they looked at a role model. Uh, they didn't know which who to pick, and uh, they wanted to create some special um, um, cross-cutting set of skills for which they could hire people or maybe train people to become DevOps engineers or members of a DevOps team. So they thought about Mr. T from A Team. And not because of the bling bling and because of the masters, although they, they should help, but because of the T. They, this is their vision of DevOps, and this is how they looked at the teams that they, they built together, looked at the classic roles that they, they, they used to have, and then they started to say, okay, where can we build the experience of everyone, whether, whether the person is an application operator, a platform operator, maybe an IIS expert, a, a, a Linux expert, or a developer and how each person has strengths and where they can uh, maybe improve and how can each one of them develop such a broad set of skills but also depth in their arena. So you may imagine that this T might shift to the left or the right a little bit, but in the end, all the members of the DevOps team will have uh, some overlap and it, it's encouraged. One of the best examples, and I wanted to give him credit, uh, is Oli. This is their champion. This is the guy who created uh, in six, the, the DevOps culture. He's a technical guy, but he was working very hard to promote not only technologies, but the cultural change. He created a guild uh, for Docker, containers, and Kubernetes years before OpenShift. And he was also the champion that started to adopt OpenShift and made it happen uh, technically. I had the privilege to work with him a lot, so I wanted to acknowledge him. And he is an example of how a set of skill sets, uh, he is a, more of a system engineer, but he built a lot of knowledge around development, for example, and a quite impressive one. Um, he unfortunately, couldn't come to this event, but uh, hopefully in the future he might be able to share his experience because he has a lot to say. Um, the team that they built, uh, you can see how it looks like, basically, they call it the Haka Six. Haka from the Maori dancers in New Zealand, they are all dressed in black, and sometimes even they dance. Uh, they have their mantra, as we build it, we, we run it, we love it, and they, they really enjoy what they do, and I've seen a true transformation in, in this company uh, while being there. Um, some of the, the things that they already achieved and they are already proud in the, in the current state, they, they, they already have a lot of uh, uh, containers, hundreds of them uh, running. Uh, they, they have a lot of CI/CD processes in place. 
they were built even before OpenShift, and uh, a lot of them are now on the OpenShift platform. Um, and they transform a lot of the silo organization into value streams. So for them, value streams are, are a key concept that they, they implemented. So a bit about OpenShift uh, and, and uh, what was at six. So the, the customer actually this morning when I reviewed the slides deck uh, to present in their absence, insisted that I should show this slide a lot. It's basically the way they see the containers were before OpenShift. So they had thousands of Docker containers already through their developed uh, as part of their DevOps initiatives. And before they looked at OpenShift, they created a whole infrastructure around it. Uh, and, and with this state of mind, they, they wanted to move to something better. So after the DevOps initiatives from 2014-15, they had the POC, and then they went through the entire methodology that uh, Red Hat Consulting, which they engaged in Switzerland, has, and they, they really uh, deployed a, a, what they think instead of the art platform uh, across the six divisions. So the, this platform has to cover all the divisions, a lot of compliance requirements of different kinds, uh, not, not less than 33 different networks have to be mapped. And I will stop a little bit in the architecture time if, the, if there is uh, some left. Um, the methodology that they uh, chose was from Red Hat Consulting, and I was involved in this myself as well. Um, because they had prior experience to some of the concepts like continuous delivery and containers, they didn't want all the offerings that Red Hat has to offer, so we tailored it down to what it makes sense for them. So the most important part was help with the designing of the architecture, defining uh, the way to, to, to operate the platform, and some of the CICD done uh, with containers specifically. Um, as far as the state, it's really done by now. So they went, uh, as I mentioned, until uh, end of December last year to a lot of these stages. They are live, and at the, at the moment, the only thing that is still in progress is the containerization of their many, many applications, which are on, on a variety of technologies, from Java to PHP to even R language, running an R studio, and so on and so forth. So what is left of their entire initiative on the technical side is to, to just migrate many apps to the containers. But they really achieved a lot. Uh, one of the difficult things was to achieve all the compliance requirements, to go through all the networking mappings and, uh, and define an architecture that is accepted by the security groups and compliance groups within six. And they were very strict. Um, in the end, um, they ended up with seven clusters, of which three are, are dropped. Of course, the POC is gone, but the, the, the main um, way they want to operate right now is to have a system engineering cluster where they simply test upgrades, and uh, it's a playground for just the ops guys. There's no development there. There is a development cluster where they want to have freedom, complete freedom for developers to create projects, to do whatever they want. There's no limitation, only the resources are the limit. Um, then a non-prod cluster where uh, a um, quite a nice set of uh, onboarding processes is in place, which using the OpenShift APIs generate projects, routers, uh, and all the need needed things for uh, application to be in place, the CI CD processes. And this cluster normally has the test uh, integration and other stages uh, within it, so multiple stages. And then they chose more probably in the old spirit to have another production cluster separate where applications are simply deployed. All the other clusters were temporary and they, they went away in time. So this is the second slide that the customer asked me to, to present because this is how they see it now. Uh, they think that all their containers are in one place. They are managed, and uh, um, this is how they feel about their, how they call the next generation container platform. Uh, a bit on the architecture, we only have a few minutes, and I would rather give the space to other customers, but because they, they had such a, a, a large um, set of networks, about 33 networks, they wanted to have basically within the OpenShift uh, platform, ideally in one cluster, a way to uh, map external networks which they want to keep uh, where they have, let's say, external applications or, or databases or per perhaps uh, other third-party applications, but segregated within their networks because, let's say, one division has to be PCI DSS compliant, another division is SMP compliant, 
uh, and so on and so forth. So each network has a set of applications that are only allowed to communicate in a restricted fashion. And they wanted to keep this within OpenShift. So uh, across two data centers, which are actually uh, located uh, quite close to each other, so they, they chose to make a stretch cluster, um, they have mapped uh, 33 networks using a combination of the HA proxy ingress routers uh, with uh, sharding, the OpenShift SDN, which pro provided the segregation of the VXLANs within the, the cluster, and also with a quite uh, uh, ingenious uh, HA proxy based egress router, because at that time the egress options in OpenShift were, were not as vast as they are today. Uh, there's an egress uh, mechanism also based on HA proxy, which manages the access to certain networks. Um, and this is done via quite a, a, detail, a complex mapping. Actually, the egress routers have two interfaces, each one into the specific network where they can connect and one in the OpenShift network. And I'll be happy after this, maybe during the, the summit, if you have questions about how this works, to, to answer questions. Um, the applications that they migrated are, are quite diverse. This is just an example of some of the, the applications that they initially listed to, to migrate. For example, they, they have an application called Twint. It is the Swiss equivalent of Apple Pay. So they, this is, they have an app that everyone uses in Switzerland to buy the same way like Apple Pay, and they wanted the backend of this app to be in OpenShift. But there's also the applications that manage the stock exchange. Uh, you have uh, actually a lot of applications for big data, they, they have credit card management, financial services applications, and they were of different kind of compliance requirement. They belong to different divisions. They belong to different networks. They had different technologies. Some were already dockerized or containerized, and some were not. So all of these applications were analyzed in terms of capacity. We actually did a lot of detailed capacity planning on what each application will need in every cluster. And in the end, a, quite a, a detailed architecture was created and uh, very Swiss, uh, very detail-oriented. Perhaps it took longer than other customers, but uh, the complexities were quite high and the Swiss don't like to rush. So with this, uh, I would like to thank you. Uh, there are a number of DevOps resources in this slide deck about Swiss presenting themselves at some events. Uh, hopefully they will have the chance to present to such an event as well uh, in the future. And I thank you. And uh, again, David from SIX will be here, uh, probably even at the reception tonight, if he can make it, if not uh, the next few days. So if you have questions, uh, uh, you can ask him directly about the SIX story. Thank you very much.